Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we're going to build a cluster, specifically a two node cluster. You can see here we have SRV1 and SRV2. And if you know anything about clusters, you know that you actually need three uh, things. You need to have three devices saying that the cluster is up. So if you've only got two, how is this going to work? No problem. We're going to set up what's called a file share witness. And we're going to set up that file share witness on a third server which in this case is our domain controller. A domain controller is probably not the best place to put it, but it's not the end of the earth. It'll work just fine. And uh, this will give us the ability to, to have a nice, simple two node cluster like so many of us have. So if SRV2 goes down for some reason, say it's being patched or it actually fails, not a problem. SRV2 can take the load from the cluster because there are two votes saying that it is still up. SRV1 will vote that the cluster is still up and the witness share will vote that it is still up. And so you'll stay up and happy. Okay, now, these are clean machines. This is all server 2022. It's pretty much the same since server 2016. So if you've got server 2016, server 2019, server 22, or uh, we've taken a quick look at server 2025, it looks pretty much the same again. These are fresh. Nothing has been done to them other than the domain controller has been promoted to a DC and it's uh, our domain's called urt.local and we've joined these two servers to that domain in an OU we've cleverly called URT servers. So that's it. So first thing we need to do, install a cluster. So how do you do that? Well, go to server manager, select manage, select add roles and features, next, role, yeah, that's fine. Now we could install this on both servers at the same time, but for simplicity's sake, we'll just do them one at a time. So let's click next, next, and it's in features. There it is, failover clustering. There we go. Yes, we want to add that. And next, and install. And we'll do the same thing on the other server. Of course, we'll speed through this. Click start, type cluster manager. Payload the cluster manager, there we go. Get rid of that now. We don't need this. Don't need that. There we go. Let's build us a cluster. So simply right click and create cluster. Before you begin, you can read through this. It's actually kind of useful. Uh, select next, enter server names. So the servers we want are SRV. We want both of these servers. Okay. There we go. And yes, you want to run the validation testing. Test passed. Yay. Finish. And this is important. What do you want to call it? Well, we're going to call this URT Buster 1. You can call it whatever you want. But it is limited to 15 characters because it is a NetBIOS name. Next, and finish. Now, there's a cluster that's up and we think, yay, we got our cluster done. <laughs> no, not really. Um, if one of these nodes goes offline, the cluster will be flagged as being offline. Why is that? Well, that's because when you go into your nodes, you'll see that there are votes that are provided to each device. And in this case, we only have two votes. Uh, and those votes say whether the cluster is up or not. So it needs to have a majority vote that the cluster is still up. If one of these goes down, that's 50%. That's not a majority. That's exactly half. So that's not good. How do you keep your cluster up? Well, it's not a problem. Add in a cluster witness share. How do you do that? Well, it's just a share on the network that's not on one of these two machines. That's the key. So as we mentioned at the start, we are going to put this on our domain controller, being the share is going to exist on the domain controller. So how do we add that into this cluster? Not a problem. Right click on your cluster name at the top, select more actions, configure cluster quorum settings. Next. How do you want to do this? Well, we want to have a forum witness. Let's click next. 
What kind of witness? We want a file share witness. And you'll notice over here, these change depending on what you select. So a cloud witness is a vote that can be taken from your Microsoft Office 365 account. If it's up and happy, form, form is met. As long as one of those two servers and this cloud witness is up. A disk witness, we can just point to a specific disk and say, you know, do we want it to be uh, voting? But we are going to do a cluster file share witness. This is pretty common. So click on that and you'll notice that this changed to cluster share witness. Click next. Well, what path? Okay, well, let's go create a share on, in this case, our domain controller. So we'll go here, we will create a new folder. We'll call this URT cluster witness. No, it's not case sensitive. I just like it because I want it to stand out when I'm looking at this in the future. Then right click on it, select properties, create a share, advanced share, sharing, I'm going to make it a hidden share, by the way, so I'm going to add a dollar sign. You do not have to do that. I just don't like things to appear to users when they're browsing the network. Dollar, in case you're not aware, makes it hidden. So it's still there. You just have to, you can't browse for it. You have to know it exists. Now, this is the old NT4 permission, so just leave it at everyone has permission. Click OK. Uh, click OK. Security. This is where the change is not obvious. So you need to add in the cluster itself that cluster needs to have permission to read and write into this folder that's how it verifies that it's up and running and we also want to remove authenticated users just as a matter of good course so i will select edit and i will remove authenticated users oh that's right we can't because it's inherited well that's not a problem select cancel that select advanced and select disable inheritance and we will convert all of the inherited uh, privileges to be uh, existing in the new security. Okay, just to clear it, there it is. Now we can go into here, we can select authenticated users and remove them, yay. Uh, this one's really not necessary. Okay, let's remove it. We don't, it's really not necessary, but we'll remove it. What is necessary is that the cluster is there. So we want URT-cluster, I think is what it was called. Press enter here and that should, yeah, it's not finding it. Why is it not finding it? Well, because we haven't selected the object type computers. In fact, that's the only one we need. You don't have to deselect them, but I'm going to uh, because it's just the computer I want. So let's uh, insert, uh, let's click on that. And now let's select check names. There it is, I found it. And okay, and it needs full control, boys and girls. There we go, done. I'm going to copy that name because I don't want to type it. Uh, not that it's very hard. But I'll go here and I'll just copy that entire name. There we go. Click cancel. And let's go back to SRV1. And the share path is there. Now, the, oh, just a note, by the way, there are some restrictions on that share. We should explain this first. So this share has to be at 5 megabytes or 20 megabytes. I can't recall uh, how large in space. Um, you could look it up if you're that tight, but you're probably not. So uh, we're talking megabytes, not gigabytes. So let's go back to our server, put the witness in, click next, bingo, and finish. And now when we look at nodes, we still see these two. It's not good. Uh, we need to have that extra vote. Don't worry, it's there. Click on your cluster and you'll see here it says share witness. And as you can see down here, the cluster is up. So if we go to nodes and we take one of these nodes offline, we'll Drain it, paused, and we go off to SRV2, and we power it down. Oh, right, we still have this open, <laughs> right. Let's power this guy down. This server has now gone offline. You can see here, it's showing off, and now the current vote is that there's a problem with the cluster, All right? There's just one vote that says things are up. Let's go back to the cluster and say, but it's still it's still online, how is that possible? Well, because there were two votes. There's the cluster shared witness. Now, if I shut down the domain controller, then there will only be one vote and you had two servers, that's two votes, plus the cluster share witness file share, that's the third vote. So if you were to turn off either the 
domain controller in this case, because that's where our witness is, or you were to turn off the their node in our cluster, there won't be enough votes to say that the cluster is still online. And as such, the cluster will uh, show has failed. Let's bring the other server back up and do some more fun stuff. Server that we just shut down, which is this one here. And while we're waiting for that, we want to get to the entire point of this video for us, which was to prove that we can change the file share witness without crashing the cluster. We don't have to shut it down, we don't have to restart, we don't have to stop anything. It just works live. We're pretty sure this will work, but we haven't done it before, so we're going to find out. So, how do you do that? Well, first thing, right click on your cluster name, go to more actions, configure cluster quorum, next, next, next. And here is where we need to set the new share. So we don't have a share yet, let's go create one. Let's go to DC1. And we will go new folder there. That's a different name. Now, just before we uh, get out of this, let's take a look at uh, the original one. Look, our cluster shared witness has some files in it. There is some stuff that was there and you can see cleverly called witness. There we go. So it's just a log file, simple stuff. And let's go back to our new share. Oh, nothing there. All right, let's go back and look at our cluster now. It should be in good shape. If it's up, let's resume. You don't have to do this, by the way. You don't have to do the resume, but we will, just so that you can see it's up. And again, I'm not going to want to type that name out. So let's get the sharing name. There it is, easier. I didn't make it a hidden share here. That was just a simple oversight on my part with the speed. But I guess it proves the point that you don't need to make it a hidden share. Uh, in fact, most people probably won't have it as a hidden share. It's just the way I always operate, and I think it's a good idea. Let's go back here, right click on our cluster, we'll go to more actions, configure cluster quorum settings, and then next, 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 and let's set the new path. There it is, change, next, finish, and look, everything stayed up. And you might say, what I, now I've got two of these. I don't want two of these. Yeah, it's no problem. Just right click on the one that you don't want. And here for fun, by the way, there's simulate failure, but we don't want to do that. We actually want to remove the original one. Let's remove it. Bye. And bingo, look, the cluster stayed up. None of, if we had VMs on this, nothing would have crashed. Uh, everything would still be happy. The cluster would stay open. Now, just a note, if you, in case you're wondering about uh, storage, uh, we should add clustered shared storage. However, this is in a test lab uh, and we're running this through Azure. We don't have access to that. But if you needed to run uh, virtual machines on here, it would be simple enough to do. You would simply go to disks, click add disk. And instead of saying that there's no suitable disks found, it will find most likely what you have is an iSCSI connection. Uh, you can use SMB shares and other things, but the best thing to do and what almost everybody will use especially in these smaller clusters, is an iSCSI connection. Yeah, you can use fiber channel and direct attached and some other things, but basically that's what people are going to use is iSCSI. So you need to get your iSCSI connection set up through Disk Manager and through your iSCSI initiator. So we'll start that. Uh, that's a whole separate video, but the key here is after you've got your storage set up, that's where your virtual machines and other functions will go and it will show up under C clustered shared store uh, right there clustered storage there we go and you can see there's nothing here but yeah <laughs> and really all this will be is a pointer off to your iSCSI connections so hey if you found this video useful please give us the big thumbs up we'd really appreciate it if you have any questions or concerns you can always get a hold of us directly at www.urtech.ca that's www.urtech.ca or you can leave a question or a comment below and if, if we don't get back to you somebody else will because on youtube everybody has an opinion thanks and have a great day bye bye